Now we come to the last hands-on foot bootloader. This will be a bootloader that will be able to authenticate the application. Again, in this hands-on, we're going to use the same application from previous ones. No change on that. And for the bootloader, we're going to build another project of bootloader with the capability to authenticate the application firmware. We will also run some host PC tool to build a binary with bootloader application and its metadata. So this metadata will include all the necessary information for the bootloader to verify the authenticity of the application. And we will also explain and observe the application firmware verification procedure in the bootloader before jumping to the application. That procedure includes the checking of magic number, the signature verification of the metadata, computation of the former hash, and comparison of the computed digest with the hash value coming from the former metadata. Hardware board and software tools wise, that's similar to the previous hands on, except that we will need to use Xcube crypto library in the project this time. And uh, actually, if uh, you have made the hands-on for the former protection, you should have downloaded the same thing. Just make sure that you downloaded the latest version of the patch of crypto library package, which is version 3.1.3, because this one includes the support of G0. Again, we will keep using the same application project. No change on that. You can keep using whatever you have previously. And uh, for the bootloader project, we will use this uh, g0br.auth.zip file. You can get the project file from this one. And uh, we will also use a tool from host to folder. Um, we will use this script to generate the binary with uh, former metadata. Metadata includes hash, uh, signature, magic number, and so on. In case you don't have an ECC key pair yet, then you would need also to run this OpenSSL tool coming from the X2 folder to create the ECC key pair. And also, you need to run the previewed.bat file to convert ECC key into a data array to be included in the source code. Before moving on, uh, let me explain a little bit of the data structure of the former metadata. So at the beginning, we have uh, 128 bytes reserved for the former info. And that info includes four bytes of magic number, four bytes of former size, four bytes for the former version, and 32 bytes of the former hash. And then the reserved bytes are not used. This is just to make sure that the data, the metadata consumes up to um, 128 bytes. And then after that, this section of the data will be used to generate the metadata hash, and then the ECDSA signature. So that is the um, overall data structure of the former metadata. This flowchart is just to give you an idea of the uh, former verification procedure that is uh, included in the bootloader. So the first thing to be checked is the uh, magic number. If mag magic number is correct, then the bootloader will compute and verify the metadata hash. If the metadata hash is also correct, then the bootloader will do a signature verification of the metadata itself. If that is also OK, then the bootloader will also compute and verify the application former hash. If everything goes fine, then the bootloader will jump to the application. If anything goes wrong within those steps, then the bootloader will go into the error handling procedure. Now you have an idea of uh, what we are going to have. So let's see it in the practice. Now this is the last hands-on 
on for the bootloader. So this one, we are going to use the same application, no need to change anything for the application. And for the bootloader, we are going to add the um, former authentication before jumping to the application. So we'll add this capability to the bootloader. Um, so the project that we're going to use this time is this uh, g0 underscore br auth. So meaning this is a bootloader with authentication. Inside this folder, uh, there is supposed to be a pro cryptographic folder. This is uh, something that you need to download from ST website. So make sure you download it crypto library, especially this latest version of the patch. So this is patch crypto library version 3.1.3. So inside this one, you will find G0 folder and uh, in the middleware folder ST, you will find this STM32 cryptographic folder. Here you have the library and include files for G0. So make sure that you copy this folder to your project folder. Otherwise, uh, your project won't build. Okay, and uh, we can take a look at the source code again. So in the C file, uh, main.c file, in the main function, we have something similar to the previous project. But before jumping to the application, there is an extra function call to verify the firmware. So we can go inside and see what is done there. So in this function, um, there will be several steps to check the former, as we explained in the previous uh, slides. So this former ver verification will check the magic number, check the magic number, will check the metadata hash, the signature of the metadata, and then We'll check also the firmware hash. So that's several steps for the firmware verification. Okay, in case anything goes wrong during this um, firmware verification procedure, uh, the software will go into a error handle, fatal error handle. Okay. So again. We are using ECDSA for the signature verification. So that means there will be a public key required to be embedded in the software. Um, it's the same way that you can generate the ECC key as we previously mentioned. So first you can use OpenSSL um, which is included in the X tools inside house underscore tools folder and run this command to generate a CC key file. And then you can also run the prebuild.bat file with parameters giving the ECC key file as well as the uh, uh, folder where you want this header file to be generated. Okay, so this time, so we will use the same ECC key, okay, but uh, we need to generate the header file because this is old one, we have uh, already modified the ECC key, so I will generate another header file to be put in uh, this folder, let's say, okay. So, now this uh, content of the header file is changed. So this is the new public key that we will embed in the software. And then we can make build. So we can make a build. Now we have the binary of the bootloader, but then we will also need to 
generate a binary um, to have the signature, to have the header valid metadata for the application. Otherwise, if you just uh, program the two binaries to the board, it won't work. So we can have a try. So let's say, okay, flash is empty. Make sure there is no right protection on the board. No PC Rob applied, no right prote protection. Okay, we can download this new bootloader. And we also need to download the application. Sorry. This one to address 8.2. We can have a look at uh, what will happen this time. Reset the board. So, from the print message coming from bootloader, you can see that uh, right now we don't read any valid data. So, magic number, former size, everything is FF. So, of course, uh, the verification will fail and uh, we will enter this um, fatal error handler. It's just uh, at this loop. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is to generate a binary with valid metadata. So this metadata includes magic number, version, firmware size, firmware hash, and also the signature of the metadata hash. Okay. For this purpose, we have also a post-build uh, a post-build bat script. And we can take a look at uh, what this script is doing first. So this is a script that we are going to use. So this script expects two input parameters. The first one is the bootloader binary. The second one is application binary. Again, um, this script will assume the key file to be named ecc.key and located in the same uh, folder as this uh, script. So uh, let's see what the, it is doing. So the first thing is to compose the binaries um, of the magic number, uh, the former size, from a version and so on to, to, to make a binary of the metadata. And then the metadata will be padded to make sure it consumes 128 bytes in total. So those are the whole data going to be assigned. So the next is to generate the digest of this uh, metadata to be signed and uh, do a signing okay and again convert the signature data from uh, ASM1 format to the pure binary okay and then there will be some uh, stuffing bytes uh, after that to make sure the whole header is um, up to the size of uh, 512 bytes. And then in the end, uh, the script will, will generate a full image with both application and the bootloader and metadata all combined into one single binary. Okay, so this is uh, what the script is doing. Then we can uh, run, run it. So the bootloader, the first parameter is the bootloader binary. We have it uh, in uh, this folder, debug. This is the binary of the bootloader and the binary of the application. We have it here, loader, so debug. Okay, and we run this script. 
Um, it asks for a version number. You can give uh, any decimal number. Um, for example, I say one. Okay. So this script will first generate the hash uh, of the former application former binary, and then will generate the metadata with magic number, size, version, and so on. So this is. Uh, the set of data going to be signed and uh, this will be the metadata hash and this is the signature data in uh, ASM1 format and then it will be converted into a uh, pure binary and then we have uh, a full header data composed so this is uh, in a size of uh, 512 bytes. Okay, so and then the at the end is just uh, to combine several binaries into a single binary. So this time we can just uh, program this binary to the board and uh, take a look. We connect. Uh, this binary is generated in the application uh, binary folder. So. You can see here now there is an out underscore foot dot pin. So this is the one to be programmed. We just program because this one includes bootloader as well. So we just program to the base address of user flash. Okay. Then we take a look at uh, the output. Do a reset. So now we can see the process of uh, former verification. It starts with, um, so here is just some print message. So it starts with the uh, former magic number check and then um, check the metadata hash and the signature. If the metadata signature verification passes, then it will also compute the former hash, I mean the application former hash, and compare with the hash value that is read from the metadata area. So if everything goes fine, then it will jump to the application. So now I think we still have the um, uh, secure the memory defined, yes. So we can still run this uh, test. It should also generate a hard fault. Okay, so that's the hands-on for you to understand how the bootloader could be protected and also doing the um, application former authentication before jumping to it. Let's have a summary of the last hands-on for the bootloader, which is a bootloader with authentication. So in this hands-on, we have seen how to add application authentication in the bootloader, what kind of tools can be used to generate ECC key pair, and how to build a binary of application with metadata that includes necessary information for bootloader to verify the authenticity of the application firmware. And also, what is the application authentication procedure that could be included in the bootloader code.